you just gotta understand it's a business, innit? No one really owes you nothing, innit? It's just a business. So you just gotta learn how to navigate through this business. You know what I'm gonna say? That like, take what you can take from it, learn from learn what you can learn and just navigate. Do you know what I'm saying? Good afternoon to Big Toes. What's going on, man? I'm good, man. How are you doing? Good, man. Good. Shining. Shining. No, just <laughs> little drip, man. Little drip, man. Small drip, man. Yeah, man. We were talking before, like, fellow Nigerian. It's always good to... Come on. ...to meet another Nigerian. Yes, brother. Um, I've always wondered, though, what's the dynamics like when you have, like, dual heritage in that way? Like, you have African influence and you have, like, the West Indian influence. What was that like for you growing um, up? For me, it was... It was it was nothing really because most of my influence came from outside really like like my friends really or in school like do you know what I'm trying to say like even even down to like my music when I got like the, the patois in it or whatever that's not from home like that's from the mandem do you know what I'm trying to say like how the mandem speak really so it's but I think I've taken more of the African heritage though than the Jamaican side but in the music obviously I gave them a bit of the Jamaican sauce you get me you been back home? I've been in Nigeria my mum lives in Nigeria oh really? yeah yeah so Last time I was there was 2014. What was that like for you? Um, it was nice, man. It was nice because before then, the last time I went was was like 2009 or something. So going there 2014, I got to see a lot more and 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 see it differently to what it was. So it was it was good still. Did you um ever find it difficult to like deal with the culture? You know, like you have to prostrate, don't give things with your left hand. Yeah, even till now, when I see like when I see like an elderly, because obviously for people that don't know, when you when you see elderly, you gotta like you don't have to, but you, you're taught to prostrate. That's like it's not like bowing down, but it's a sort of ask your Nigerian friends in it, but it's a prostrate. So even t- till now, like when I see the elderly, I still give them that respect in it. It's something that's in me that won't really leave in it. You ever been to any of like the traditional wedding? Yeah, of course, course, course. And they're, they're dashing, and when they're dashing the, the, the nairas and the dollars on, yeah, I've seen everything, man. But the crazy thing we have the life when the man of the life flat. that's a bit of a myth still not <laughs> that's a myth but one time when i went to um i went to nigeria when i went to nigeria in 2009 we met the king or something like that anyway and we had to um go fully down like a press up position and do that still yeah the experience man that isn't it yeah 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 so tell me what was it like you you're from east right yeah east you've been there all your life no i was born in south in stockwell and I moved to East, yeah. How old are you when you left Stockwell? Um, probably like 13, 14 or something like that. But yeah, 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 yeah. We've so got to yeah. claim you, I'm from South. Man. Okay, yeah, I don't, I, I always say like raw South and East, innit? Like I, I claim both, innit? But I kind of grew more in East, innit? As a man, you know what I'm trying to say? Stockwell, Stockwell's a, it can be rough. Man. Where I lived on Dorset Road, it was the hood. Like I lived in a proper block, so like it was proper, even from that young age, like it was, it was grimy, like it was grimy, but I loved it. It was like a community, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, did you find that those informative years shaped your character <coughs> to who you are today? What, um, in Stockwell? Yeah. Um, it made me very independent, like, because from a young age, like, I got older brothers as well, so I used to roll with my older brothers and that, so, like, I was, I was very outside from a young age, you know what I'm trying to say? So, I kind of got my independence from there, like, even when I moved to East, I was still travelling back down to South, like, to chill with my friends, like, at a young age, so... It kind of just made me a bit independent, just like being able to go outside on your own and do things on your own. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when you when you now get into like the secondary school mm. years, like, was music part of your aspirations? Nah, not until like yeah, like yeah, eleven. That's when I started first writing like little four bars. You know, when you're just repeating yourself. Like, that's when I started. My name was Clash Kid then. So you're doing grime then? I'm doing grime then, garage. You get me? That's what it was like garage. Then I was doing grime. I even remember in year eleven, I clashed Chipmunk. You remember when I see him, I always remind him like this because we, went, we both went to school in Tottenham, innit? Okay. So, like, it was like a school clash, innit? Kind of thing, innit? So, his school, he went to Gladesmore, yeah, yeah. I went to John Loughborough, innit? So, we went to Tottenham High Road outside of McDonald's and we clashed, like, and then they was rating me. He was trying to, he was trying to get me to join his um, North Circle back in the day, trying to get me to join his crew and that, like, it was mad. But I was never into music like that. Yeah. Nah. All right, so when you're clashing Chip, like, how did that grow? Like, I didn't know who Chip was, like, do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, he was big then, but. Like I'm from, I was born in South. I was living in Stowe. I went to school in Tottenham. So all my bedrooms knew about Chip. It was like, oh yeah, you're gonna clash Chip and and some next guy like did it then. I'm like, yeah, cool, like whatever in it kind of thing in it. So I didn't really know who he was in it. But then when we was clashing, everyone like knew his bar. Like everyone knew he was popular in it. But then for me, it was just like, oh yeah, like that's why I didn't join his team because I was thinking 
he's from that school like I want my thing like I want my bedrooms I'm not really trying to it didn't phase me in it I want I want trying to be an artist do you get what I'm saying that so yeah so what's, what's college like then I went college in Wolfram store that was cool man I was home man that was like home like I was really into basketball then okay. so like I'll go to college I'll go to training like I used to dedicate I used to really play basketball like I used to train hard so like college was going to college do my classes my stuff go to basketball training and that was like my life then innit did you what did you do at um, college study wise I done I got poor GC I got like free GCSE so in college I done like B Tech media like I done a B Tech first media and then the second year I think I done nationals I think I done me- yeah I done media media and I think maths or something but listen to GCSEs man what's that like when you come home with those grades bro I remember like the day I got my grades yeah I was with my boy me and my boy didn't used to revise we used to go home after school and play burnout with Mario Kart Double Dash every single day we was not revising then we both went to get our results like he went to a different school but we linked up after got our shit results and that I remember calling my mum on the way home like me and my boys were laughing like ah! I called my mum like but she was like she was crying on the phone like and I felt so bad. I was like, oh, shit. I felt so bad. But I was still laughing with my boy in it because he didn't take it seriously. But like that kind of made me realise that no, I need to. That's like from then, after college, I made sure I just tried to focus a bit more on, on the education stuff. Like, yeah, because culturally, where we're from, like. Culturally, you know, it's like the parents, they just want to brag to their friends. Like, you get it from, oh, what did you, what did he what get? Did you start, yeah, I'm going to say, that's why she's upset because she can't tell my auntie that T- Tobe's got like 11 GCSEs. Like, it's embarrassing, isn't it? So. In our culture, you really want to make your parents proud, innit? Do you know what I'm saying? That's why I've done an education thing, like. Yeah. Mm. All right, so coming from that place then, what point is it that you start thinking, do you know what, I'm going to really do music? Um, Even still, like, because like, I only started taking music seriously, like, 2014, 15. Okay, so before that then, so were you just like... You just before like, then, it was just a thing where, like, so... Because before then, I, like, I really wanted to be a basketball player, like, I took it seriously, like, I went to America, I was playing in, I was, I was staying in France for a while, like in the academy there. I was serious, like, do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, so I thought that was my, I thought that was going to be me, like go to America, make it in basketball and that, like, but obviously when you're over here, things don't really go to plan in it. So when that kind of felt, not felt, but when that kind of went air for me, like I just started hanging around with the man them a bit more in the ends. That's when I like, started meeting other rappers as well in the ends. And then that's when I started rapping a bit more and then freestyles in the ends and, Eventually, the link up TVs and that, and it just picked up from there. And that's when I thought, okay, maybe it's a music thing. Do you know what I'm saying? That's a, that's a bit of an adjustment, though, though. Yeah, it's a mad adjustment. Like, I, was, I never thought I was going to be this today. Like, that was never my plans, but I always loved music growing up. Like, with, with basketball, though, like, that you have to be like super dedicated. Like, yeah, yeah, for, like, like, fitness. Like, yeah, 100%. And, and it's good because basketball trained me to be very disciplined, didn't it? And focused, like, because I used to train hard, like, every single day in it. So, you gotta be dedicated, you gotta train every day, you gotta stay fit, you gotta listen, you gotta be like attentive, it's mad. And it and it helps me as a person, it helped me as a person as well. Like. Yeah, so a lot of people will know you from like the music elements, but kinda like before that, did you ever like ever, ever have any like part time jobs? I had a few part time jobs here and a few like hustles on the side, didn't it? But that kinda all changed. That really changed after I dropped you know my style. That song was so big. That's that's when I left everything. Like I left everything. I just focused right because I, I, I was my face was getting bait now, so I couldn't do all the things I was doing before. I said, you know, I got to do this music thing. Like, so that's when everything kind of changed. That. How did you know that it changed though? Was it like people's reactions to you? Was it the views you were getting? Yeah, I mean, like, cause yeah, cause first, I mean, before that, I was still doing my thing. I had a few tunes in it, and then when you're getting noticed, like you're going out and people actually clocking you and that like, they want to take pictures. That's when you're clocking raw. Like, man's slightly turning into some celeb, innit? And after you know my style, obviously that went off in it. That's when I'm getting shows now. I remember when I went to my first, before then I was doing a few open mics, like small shows, free shows, like. And then after you know my style, when I was getting these uni bookings and I'm seeing like bare cameras and people, I'm even mad. That's when I clocked raw, like, this is me, like, do you know what I'm saying? Like, this is what I'm doing now, innit? And that's when it really changed that. Like. What's that adjustment like? Because, I'm not saying coming from the roads, but being known on the roads and then being known by strangers for music. It's different. You're paranoid at first because you're just thinking, right, like, it's just, it's very different, innit? But for me, like, I've never really been um, gassed over, like, fame, hungry, like, I've, not really, I've never been like, oh, like, all these people, like, I've always just been, like, my, pe- my people will tell you, like, I've always just been, like, mellow and just taking it easy, like, so even, it took me a while to even realise how far I'd actually come, like, in the music, like, after you know my style, like, I look back and said, right, like, man, I actually used to perform to, like, 10 people and now it's like this and I've not even really registered it too much, like, because I've just been, taking and just trying to get to another a better level level on that like so 
even now I'm still like just taking it in. Do you know what I'm saying? That. Like, do you not feel like you've arrived yet, or do you still feel like there's there's nah, no way, no way arrived. Because no people way. say like, look, big toes. Yeah, I also also saw you in the intent. Oh, yeah, trust uh, me, acting, <laughs> act, act, acting, thing, acting career still. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but it's like the progression has been it's been visible. So how yeah. do you know if you're like succeeding in your course or not? Um, it's, it's, I think it's down to you. Like, what what is success to you in it? Like for me, like I've not done all the things I want to do. Like, like I want to tour. I still want to buy my my parents a big house. I still want to do so much things in it. So for me, I'm not successful yet. Like, but I'm st- I still feel blessed of of how far I've come. Like I've not I've done something. Do you know what I'm trying to say? But I've, I'm still not where I want I want to be. Like, yeah, let's, touch on, let's touch on the tour situation. So obviously this year you haven't been able to tour, mm. but hopefully you like in a new year. We're gonna be getting that big Tobes tour. Yeah, yeah, God willing. Yeah, no. So like, um, so like my last headline show. Unfortunately, someone got stabbed. After, nothing to do with me, nothing to do with my people. Just some sort of altercation in it. After the show, the show was successful. After it finished, something happened. People got into a fight, escalated in it, and then from then, a lot of my London shows. It's been very hard for me to get London shows in it because of that. Because of the venue I used, they're connected to so much different kind of proper venue so it affected man and then just like previous like little rest like when I was a bit younger and that they just linked everything so there was like right this tour the venues are not sure because he's higher risk and that and it's like that kind of affected everything so then London got taken off and then I think Birmingham and then we were just like right this can't really run in it because now we're struggling to get venues we've got like a month or two left and just had to pull the tour and then just come again yeah I mean it sounds challenging when you're like on a new path now mm. like you're just making music now mm. and things out of your control mm. still seem to be like able to like pull you back so how do you mentally manage that situation yeah just got to, just got to have faith man like do you know i feel like everything happens for a reason like it didn't go through th- that time next year will probably be bigger and better next year i have more music out i'll probably be more popular and then i have a better tour so i'm not really trying to dwell on that like it happened it didn't go through but maybe it wasn't the time you know what i'm saying you know, you you put out a song that's dedicated to to black women, mm. um, and it wasn't really fully, you know, yeah, yeah, delved yeah. into. But mm. um, but why did you think it was important for you to put out that record? No, I just felt like I didn't feel like enough rappers or enough people was like giving black women the praise they deserve in it. And then also like when you're online and you're seeing stuff like um, you're seeing people say that we don't do it enough as well. I thought you know what, it's it's true, and you know what, yeah. It's true, like maybe maybe they do need to hear it more, like because we might believe it, but maybe it's not shown online enough and stuff. So I just thought, you know, what, yeah, let me speak to them and tell them what I think personally. Do you know what I'm trying to say about Black women, and also it's Black History Month as well. And I thought this is a perfect time just to show appreciation to Black women. That like, my mum's black, my cousins are black. Like, why not? Do you know what I'm trying to say? And it was challenging because I knew that. Do you know what? To be fair, I didn't even think that anything negative will come from our people. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like I thought like it would be like other races that'll be like oh no this tune but funny enough like people are saying stuff like oh, it's a bandwagon thing or he's not genuine or he's trying to get black girl stripes and i'm thinking to myself like this tune was not it's like i didn't speak to my label like yeah let's do this on the, on the tactical thing like this was just i was in a studio ranchi my, my producer was making a beat and i said raw it just came to me i said raw i started i started the lyric like oh yeah girl you're black and you're beautiful remember this and i just carried on and i just said everything that was on my mind and i just released it I didn't want. To, I didn't care about the numbers, the streams. I just wanted to release it. So whoever hears it that needs to hear it, hears it. That's all that matters to me. I don't care about getting black girl stripes or getting that. Like, that doesn't matter to me. Like I'm not doing it for a show or for like anything like that. I done it for the people that need to hear it, and I'm happy because I feel that the people that need to hear it heard it, and it's gonna it's gonna reach more people as well. Like, do you know what I'm saying? So. Okay, when you and I think the argument sometimes is when someone does decide to do something like that. Mm they get backlash or they may be like yeah. next time when am I going to do it no because it, I don't care like see the backlash it's, it's annoying because you feel like raw like I'm actually sticking my neck out of the line to do this because it's not easy to, to like be brave and do certain things in it but I understand that like people always going to have their opinions but anyway, I, as I said I've done it for the people that need to hear it that's what matters that's more that matters more than the little people tweeting anything do you know what I'm trying to say because it's obviously not for you if, you, if it doesn't affect you then it's probably, it's probably not for you do you know what I'm trying to say but the people that's it's affected DM'd me, messaged me, oh, I love this, my daughter, this. That means more to me than any of any of that backlash, to be fair. Like. Where I struggle with it, like I told you, I spoke to Cadet about something similar, but in a different context, like mm. relationships, mm. is I don't understand what is to be achieved with the negativity if 
you're trying to put out a positive message. I just I just can't understand. Yeah, that. yeah, like it's, but that's just that's the that's the people, man. You can't you can't please everyone in it, and you can't control everyone's. You just gotta let them do what you do, and just do what you know is right in it. Do you know what I'm saying? So okay, so this year, you signed a deal. Yeah. With major. Um, big how up did, Polydor. Yeah. yeah. Big up Polydor. How did that process all come about? Yeah, no, I think at the time, I think quite a few labels was interested. I kind of let my manager deal with the label side of things in it while I was just focusing on the music. And then we felt like Polydor was the best label for us. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And yeah, that's how I'm with Polydor, man. And we're just working now, man. We're working now. Well, what's, I mean, like for someone who's been independent mm. to now going to a major, mm. what, what's the main differences that you felt? Um, you just get more like support, like as in like, you got like a digital team, you got like a marketing team, you got like, there's so much people that can do so much things that you might not necessarily be able to do yourself in it. So you have to do less work really kind of thing. And you still have to have your own ideas and, and initiative, but they've got a lot of, they can put their hands in a lot of places where I couldn't put my, put my hands on, my manager couldn't buy ourselves in it. So it's that extra push. Yeah. And also you said like in 2019, what well you told me off camera that you're going to be potentially, is it in a film? Yeah, so I've got like a rap movie coming up called The Jungle, which is, if they've seen the move with me and Blitz, like they're gonna love this one, innit? This is like mad, <laughs> mad. So, is acting really an, a thing for you now? Yeah, man. It's something I've definitely been wanting to get into. I think even this rap movie was like my first time to really kind of act a bit. Like obviously I was in the intent, but I was just a little scene, innit? But yeah, this is an opportunity for me to like really dive into the acting stuff. Obviously, it's still gonna be a lot of improvements to be made in that, but it's like my. My, my effort to just get into that kind of scene. Can you talk about what your character is in the, in the film? Nah, man. You can't. have to just wait, man. Okay. have to just wait, man. And we're going to be, do you know when we're going to be getting it? Um, God willing, Christmas period. God willing, Christmas period, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's around the corner. Then. Around the corner, D. Yeah, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it, is it going to be sh- like cinema or is it going to be straight to DVD? Um, no, nah, it's, it's going to be, there's going to be a premiere for it. Like people will know about it. Within the next couple of weeks, people will know about it, but it's going to be on YouTube, innit? Yeah. Obviously, if it gets bigger and better, then you don't know where it can go in it. But for now, just YouTube. Wait, artists on YouTube, like, do you when you put up a video, are you looking at your know, the views as a form of validation, or do you? Yeah, don't? man. It's bad, but yeah, because that's the only thing that can tell you like how much people's viewing it or how much people like it. Sometimes, isn't it? That's the only kind of validation you can really get. That. Like. Mm. Because I know artists that like they'll be like, oh, I want to put it on my own channel, but the views are gonna be dead. Yeah, because it's not even that, it's the way you lot see, like, if you lot see a video and it's got, like, 100 views and you see a video of 100k, you're gonna, you're not gonna, you're gonna feel like this is a dead tune or you're gonna feel like, mm, it ain't got views, so I'm, like, it's nothing, innit? Because that's how people see it, they just judge it by the views and stuff, innit? Not the actual content. So does that make you then also think about how you actually are making the videos, like, to pique people's interest? Yeah, 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 that's why my videos, I always try to make my videos like a cut above the rest, not typical stuff, just me on the block with man, them and hoodies. Like, I try to do my thing a bit different so people actually enjoy the watch. Even if it doesn't get a lot of views, at least if I know I put out a very good video, no one can chat, like, do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, no one can chat. If anything, they'll be like, rah, they're going to say, rah, why ain't this got a lot of views? I'd rather that, do you know what I'm saying, rather than it just being some, anything, like. Can I pick you up on something? In the ZZ freestyle, yeah. you shouted out Dummy. Yeah, Dummy, what, disturbing, what, 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 Yeah, what's your relationship like with Dummy? No, so my manager actually works with Dummy as well and that kind of thing. So I know Dummy and showed me mad love, like same as Tiny Temper, like that whole Disturbing London camp, they've shown me love in it. So I've got love and I, I see Dummy a lot. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like I performed at Disturbing IB for a lot. So I just put, I, I was like, oh, Disturbing London, even Dummy like that. I just, it's, just a, it's a punchline, isn't it? It's a punchline. Yeah, that's it, man. Yeah, now Dummy's one of those people that he, he tries to give people a lot of information. And yeah, Dummy's Dumi, a good guy, man. Big up Dummy, man. Yeah, and also, what kind, what kind of things have you learned now being in the music industry? You learn that you, you've learned that people are fake, man. <laughs> but you learn that. But you know, it's like it's a it's a business, man. Like it's just a business, isn't it? And you you can't you can't like you can't wear your heart on like it's, you just gotta understand it's a business, isn't it? No one really owes you nothing, can it? It's just a business, so you just gotta learn how to navigate through this business. You know what I'm gonna say that? Like, take what you can take from it, learn from learn what you can learn, and just navigate. You know what I'm saying? But you know, a counter to that is that. Although it's a business, if this is the culture, mm. it's hard to not feel like it's not a business. It's for like brotherhood, it's fam. Yeah, I know, I know, but you learn things when you're in the game, innit? Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, so you just see it straight as business now? Is that in- the is industry, it? when it comes to the industry stuff, like it's, it's a business, innit? Obviously, you've got your team, innit? Who's just people and it's, it's deeper than just business, innit? But 
the industry side of things is business, isn't it? Everyone wants to make their money, isn't it? Obviously, people show you show you genuine love. People believe in you and they show you genuine love, but it's still just a business, and that's how I see it. Do you think this um, urban thing, or I won't call it a phase, but I remember like in 2010, we had the chips, the tinies. Mm. Um, I guess you can even put ironic in there. Mm. Then it went qu- and end ups, and it went quiet. Then mm. everyone's getting independent, mm. and everyone's got signed again. Yeah, and everyone's signing deals again. Yeah. Do you, do you feel like this time here it's going to be a bit more different because we've got like Spotify supporting you've got like the link ups you know it's mad because you got you got like Spotify and that like so people are clocking they can do this thing independently now get their own numbers but at the same time labels are clocking raw like they can get the numbers so let me jump onto them quickly innit so they're slapping out deals so like that's why I think labels are signing a lot of fresh acts that just come in the game and they, they hear like a hundred bags they jump into it straight away innit but obviously like a lot of people are clocked as well like they don't need the label or they might not need need the label because they're getting so much Spotify numbers by themselves, they're getting bookings by themselves and all that stuff. But the label helps as well. So it just depends on what's best for you as an artist with the label thing. So within music, do you have any like plans to expand like having like your own label, having your own talent work? Well, I've got I've got um a, a clothing line called Corner Clothing. Like obviously my catchphrase is Corner. Um, been working on that behind the scenes, innit? That's I know that's gonna do well once I'm just working on the site and everything. But a lot of people have been demanding that. So on the clothing line side of things, that's there. Hopefully I have my own corner record label as well, like, but right now I'm just trying to focus on, musically I'm just trying to focus on building my thing to a level where I can actually focus on maybe signing a label, signing an artist or whatever. But for now I'm just trying to work on my music and the clothing now. Um, family now, right? How do they see you now? Now you're a rapper, like, do they, do they follow you? My mum, my mum, my mum's on Instagram, she needs to get off Instagram, I'm not joking. Yeah. <laughs> my mum, my mum's, my mum's my biggest fan, do you know what I'm saying? My mum's my biggest fan, she's always like, hailing me up and that, like. My dad has always always been supportive. Like, I think my parents, like, even though I weren't getting good grades, like, anything they knew I was passionate about, they believed that, they believed in me. Even when it comes to basketball, they believed, like, do your thing, like, do your basketball. Music, obviously, they, they're like, they, 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 they was church people, innit? So, like, at first, when I'm talking about beating and them thing, they're like, they're like, hmm. Did but, you want hear your lyrics? Huh? Did you want listen to your lyrics? She's see, she seen, she, yeah, she knows, but she, when it's a bad tune and I'm talking Grease, she don't even, she won't message me. If it's a clean tune, oh, that's a nice, so, nice song sound and that. When it's Grease, she won't even say nothing to me. Do you get what I'm trying to say? But they understand I'm a grown man in it, so like, it's entertainment in it, but. But I mean, they, they fully get that. Yeah, you know, like, they get it. Sometimes it's hard for them to understand that this is actually a career. Until yeah, no, they get it. They get it. It's the entertainment business in it. As long as they know I'm not losing myself, like mentally, like I'm not taking mad drugs or I'm not like, you know what I'm saying? Like, fully going left. They know that I'm, I'm a good, I'm a good child in it. So like, I'm responsible. I'm respectful. Like I'm not, I'm not falling off. I'm not like doing wild stuff. I'm not getting locked up every, like, you know what I'm saying? So they, they respect that I'm just doing what I need to do. You know what I'm saying? But did, was there any point that you thought that music weren't going to happen for you? Yeah, definitely. Before you know my style, I thought it was like I'm always going to be underrated, man. Because I was putting out mad freestyles then, mad stuff. I was thinking, but man's not really getting taken in like that. Then after that, that's when, like, that period before then, I just thought, I, w- I didn't think uh, anything was going to come up, come from it. I thought, like, hmm, it's just wishy-washy. Like, it might go, it might not. That's why I was doing other things. So I was thinking, raw, whatever, in it. After you know my star clocked raw, that opened the door for me. You know what I'm saying? And also, like, the part about relationships. Mm. Like, I haven't even I, that's why I said I got you confused I haven't, I haven't seen like your girlfriend mm. but like what rappers going public now that is a fad oh. that part Manam did not used to do um, with all. the public thing like to be fair I prefer private life personally, personally I want to buy sometimes gal just want to be shown and them thing they're like for me like I prefer I think a private life is a better life in it because there's no one trying to get involved no one trying to destroy things, no one trying to just, there's no pressure in it. Do you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people are doing a public thing and then put your girl up, take it off. Oh, they broke up. It's just long, innit? Like I didn't want that, but I kind of got pressured into doing that kind of thing, innit? So that's why my thing's like that, innit? But if it was up to me, just keep it private, man. Do you know what I'm saying? Keep it private, like. Wait, like a lot of girls are. Like when I'm on, when I'm on your IG, I'm seeing mm. a lot of girls like leaving comments though. Mm. Is, your, is your missus looking at like, Nah, you better not like them pictures back. I don't like pictures anyway, man. No. Like if I if I know them, I'll like a picture. But in general, I don't really, I don't, I don't like to gas up girls, like because you like a picture and then oh yeah, he tried to move to me, he tried to do this, like I just like I'm just cool, man. 
I don't even follow that much. Like, I just, I'm just cool, man. Like, I'm just cool, man. I've, al- I've always wanted like just being a public figure now in mm. a way that like music relationship, how that balance works out. Uh, it's not easy, man. It's not well, easy. Well, what man. part isn't easy then? Because I like I, in my situation, like, I don't. My girlfriend, she, different industry. Like, okay. So this thing don't mean nothing to me. I mean, no, it's just people always talk like people always chat rubbish. Like people always like make up things like. It's when you're in a public eye, it's like you're, it's like you're, it's for, you're the public, innit? You're for the public, like it's just everyone's gonna say whatever they want. Like I just, I don't really, I don't really like it, man. To be fair, I don't really like it, man. If I didn't rap, I would not be on Insta, like I would not be on Snap, like I might have, a, I might have like one, two pictures, but I would not be on so, I won't be on this all this social stuff, like. Do you know what, what was I talking to? I was talking to someone and they said that something similar to that. That I, they said that your character is like you're not really for this whole. Even though I said to you for like show the jewels, but you're not a showy, showy person. Yeah, no, nah, man, I'm not a showy, showy person. Like, if you know, you know, innit? it. But just like with music, sometimes you have to like. If I show signs, because I probably I have, probably have to like because it's just part of the it's part of the culture, part of the scene. But I'm not really too like showy, showy like. But then what? How with fame and success, you're gonna have to almost adopt that. No, not really, man. No. Not really, man. It's just that's just our mindset. We feel like raw because like we have to show that we got big chains. We got to show that we're successful. Like, I've seen bare rich man just win nothing like but they're wealthy because they don't care about trying to show off like you don't need to show nothing to show that like people if you if you know you know in it you know them ones that that's how i see it kind of lastly what kind of things can we be looking forward to from you sorry in 2019 so yeah i've got my new single it's a banger dropping in january i've got this rap movie putting me the best thing you lot have seen that like, for a while and then just more ho- obviously hopefully another tour or at least a headline show and just more bangers, man. Hopefully, more acting stuff as well. That like, big up Jazz. Jazzy's got like a barber show as well. Oh, Jazzy movements. Yeah, yeah, which I'm gonna be in as well. Like yeah, big I'm, movements, man. I remember you doing those posts, believe in your barber. See, man, no, I I started this believe in your barber thing, innit? Yeah, I start. <laughs> the trim is not a one today, yeah, but man, gas the man with that one still. That's a mad one, yeah. Believe in your barber, man.